Huygens' principle. All points on a wavefront act as point sources to produce spherical secondary waves that are called wavelets. So we have a wavefront. Each point on this wavefront acts as a source of spherical secondary waves. So you can see that this point produces this wavelet, this point produces this wavelet, and this point produces this wavelet. And they all interfere to produce the new wavefront, which is uh, between B prime and B. So uh, the wavelets move with the propagation speed of the wave in that medium. So if this is in vacuum or air, the wavelet will move a distance C delta T in a time interval delta T. And the new wavefront is the surface tangent to the wavelets. So these spherical wavelets will have a tangent producing this new wavefront. So this is a very important uh, principle and it can be used to uh, prove the law of reflection and uh, refraction. So let's see how that works in the case of reflection. Uh, so we're considering two uh, rays, ray one and ray two, hitting this uh, um, medium, the surface of this medium, and uh, ray 1 hits the medium at point A and ray 2 hits the medium uh, at, uh, at, hits the surface at point C. Now, A, point A and point B are on a wavefront, so we, we can say that this is a plane wave that is approaching the surface. So these two points, A and B, are on the same uh, wavefront. So A sends out a wavelet later passing through point D. So at point A we have a wavelet that was sent out now that is passing through point D. Now since A and B are on the same wavefront the angle here is uh, 90 degrees. Okay so we have a 90 degree angle here because they are on the same uh, wavefront. Okay, now uh, at the same time, B emits a wavelet passing through point C. So when A emits uh, this wavelet, which later passes through point D, B emits a wavelet which uh, passes through point C. So this is going to hit the surface at point C. Uh, so at that moment, uh, the ray emitted by uh, the wavelet emitted by uh, point A reaches point D. Okay, now A and B are on the same wavefront. So I want to concentrate on ABC and ADC triangle. So ABC and ADC triangle, as you can see. ABC triangle, because this is 90 degrees, is a right triangle. It has hypotenuse uh, AC. ADC triangle, because A and D are on the same wave front, is also a right triangle and it has the same hypotenuse uh, AC. So ABC and ADC have the same hypotenuse uh, AC. So if I call this angle uh, gamma prime and this angle gamma here, so ABC and ADC triangles have the angle gamma at corner C here and angle gamma prime at corner D here. So uh, because Huygens principle tells me that these wavelets move with the propagation speed of the uh, light in that medium. So I, I'm going to have the distance traveled by this wavelet AD equal to C times delta T, if this is in vacuum or air, and BC, the distance traveled, will be also equal to C times delta T. Now they share the same hypotenuse and they also have AD equals BC C delta T. So from this conclusion, I can say ABC and ADC are congruent. They have the same hypotenuse. So um, if I look at the cosine of angle gamma, uh, so this angle here, cosine of gamma will be equal to BC divided by AC. 
and cosine of gamma prime will be equal to AD divided by AC and BC and AD are equal. AC is the same hypotenuse. So I find that gamma and gamma prime should be the same. Now, uh, what is gamma and what is gamma prime? So uh, you can see here that gamma is equal to 90 minus theta 1. Why? Because uh, this uh, ray 1 and ray 2 are parallel rays and ray 1 makes an angle theta 1 with respect to the vertical axis so ray 2 will also make uh, the angle theta 1 with respect to the vertical axis and gamma plus uh, theta 1 is 90 degrees here so gamma is 90 minus theta 1 at the same time gamma prime is equal to gamma because of this uh, cosine a property and what is gamma prime gamma prime you can see uh, is equal to theta 1 prime the angle of reflectance uh, plus gamma prime is 90s or 90 minus theta 1 prime so 90 minus theta 1 equals 90 minus theta 1 prime theta 1 equals theta 1 prime so this proves the law of reflection okay and let's take a look at refraction uh, now, at the moment ray 1 strikes the surface at point A, it sends out a wavelet to point D. So this is ray 1 coming and hitting uh, with respect to the normal uh, with an angle theta 1. And uh, at the moment it hits, uh, strikes the surface at point A, uh, it sends out a wavelet and this wavelet will later pass through point D. Now, on the same wave front, uh, we have for the parallel ray, ray 2, a point B. Uh, this sends out a wavelet, uh, which is reaching point C. So, basically, when this wavelet reaches point C, this wavelet reaches point D. So, I choose point D so that when this wavelet reaches point C, this will have reached point D. Okay, so what is the distance AD? And what is the distance BC? So AD is the speed of light in that medium, the second medium, V2 times delta T. BC is the speed of light in medium 1, V1 times delta T. Okay, so AD is V2 delta T, BC is V1 delta T. So let's concentrate on this triangle ABC, which is a right triangle, because A and B are on the same wave front. Uh, so if this angle is uh, theta 1, that is the uh, incidence angle, so uh, this is 90 degrees, so this angle is 90 minus theta 1, so you can see that this angle here will be equal to theta 1. All right, so because I have a total of 90 degrees here, 90 minus theta 1 and theta 1. So what is sine theta 1? Sine theta 1 is BC divided by AC, where BC is V1 times delta T. So it will be V1 delta T divided by AC. Now if I look at ADC triangle, so this is the angle of refraction. Theta 2 is the angle of refraction here. Uh, and um, point D and point C are on the uh, same uh, wave front so uh, we have a 90 degree angle uh, here so you can see we have a 90 degree angle uh, here uh, so uh, this is our 90 degree angle so this is theta 2 therefore this has to be 90 minus theta 2 so this has to be theta 2 so with that, sine theta 2 is AD divided by AC, which is V2 delta T divided by AC. So if I take the ratio sine theta 1 over sine theta 2, V1 delta T over AC, 
uh, multiplied with AC over V2 delta T. So I find that sine theta 1 over sine theta 2 is V1 over V2. Index of refraction of medium 1 is C over V1. Medium 2 is C over V2. So for V1, I substitute C over N1. For V2, I substitute C over N2. So therefore, this becomes N2 over N1 because the C's will cancel. So N1 sine theta 1 equals N2 sine theta 2. So using Huygens principle, now I have also uh, proven the law of refraction. Okay, so Huygens principle states that all points on a wavefront act as point sources that produce spherical secondary waves called wavelets. These wavelets travel with the same propagation speed of the wave in that medium and they uh, produce uh, a surface which is tangent to these wavelets that creates the new wavefront uh, as the wave propagates. And using this principle, uh, we have proven the law of reflection. So by looking at two parallel rays hitting the uh, surface here, uh, we have discovered that uh, if uh, A sends out a wavelet to later passing through point D at the same time, B emits a wavelet passing through point C. So basically we choose this point so that this wavelet has reached point C. Uh, we discover that ABC and ADC triangles are congruent with 90 degree angle. Uh, the key point here is to note that A and B are on the same wave front. And also uh, here we have A and uh, D on the same wave front. Okay, so for this reflected ray. So uh, by looking at the cosine of the angle gamma and gamma prime here, noting that gamma is 90 minus, gamma prime is 90 minus theta 1 prime, gamma is 90 minus theta 1, we obtain the same angle of incidence and angle of reflectance. Now for the refraction, a similar analysis for two parallel rays hitting a surface, uh, we see A and B are on the same wave front and D and C are on the same wave front. So D is the point this wavelet emitted by uh, point A reaches when the wavelet emitted by the point B on the same wave front reaches point C. And uh, seeing that we have the same wave front for D and C and same wave front for A and B, the angle here is theta 2 because this is 90 minus theta 2 and the angle here is theta 1 because this is 90 minus theta 1. And looking at the signs of these angles and noting that the distance traveled by these wavelets are for AD V1 delta T, for, B, for AD V2 delta T, for BC V1 delta T, we obtain the ratio of the signs uh, which using the definition of index of refraction gives us Snell's law n1 sine theta 1 equals n2 sine theta 2.